Today we're taking a look at float valves in evaporative coolers or swamp coolers. Uh, basically your float valve is what um, allows water to refill the water chamber on your evaporative cooler. As the water level goes down, kind of like a toilet, the float valve will also go down and water will start to be expelled out the valve there. As the water level increases, uh, the valve will close, causing the water flow to stop. Now, unfortunately, just due to the nature of uh, evaporative coolers, these float valves have a finite life. And that is because what you basically have here is a giant water evaporation device. As water evaporates, anything that's in solution chemically in the water, uh, whether it's calcium, hard waterness, you know, minerals, all that kind of stuff, um, as water evaporates, the all the calcium and minerals are gonna stay in the water. They don't evaporate with the water. So basically in the bottom of your tank here, you end up with all kinds of hardness. And here in Arizona, we have especially hard water because we have so much uh, calcium in the ground um, that the groundwater itself is full of calcium. So the process happens that much quicker. Um, there are a couple things you can do to kind of help mitigate it. Uh, most most pumps do have a little output that you can attach a an output line to and run that outside somewhere. You're basically pumping out a little bit of water. Um, as the pump's pumping up to the pads, it's also pumping out a little bit of water through the output port um, out to ground. That, that's a pretty effective way of keeping the water pretty much fresh, uh, meaning you're not going to end up with a, an ever uh, escalating amount of hard water in the tank but you are gonna be wasting quite a bit of water. If you can somehow rig that up to water your plants, water that you would be using anyways, um, by all means go for it. Otherwise it's it's a pretty big waste of water. There's quite a bit of water that comes out of there, uh, but it, it is an effective solution. Uh, there is also uh, pellets you can get. They're like a clear, uh, they almost look like big chunks of rock salt that are clear. Um, they go in a little mesh bag that sits down in the water. Um, that kind of helps to take the the water, the solids in the water, out of suspension. Um, I believe um, I have tried it before. I didn't notice a drastic or dramatic um, improvement, so I haven't really used that. You can also get those that go in line with your water supply, it's like a little canister that you run in line before you actually hit the the shutoff valve there. Um, but like I said, I haven't noticed them to be especially helpful. So when it comes to the actual float valve itself, it's pretty simple. Uh, just kind of like the one you have in your toilet. As the water level goes down, the valve opens and allows water to enter the, the chamber on the bottom there. As the water level rises, uh, it shuts off the valve. And what happens, usually after sitting over the winter break, is that uh, the rubber seal in there um, gets crap on it or um, becomes uh, you know not smooth, has little pits or perforations and uh, basically you won't get a good seal anymore. Like you can have water all the way up to the top and you're still going to get drips and that can lead to your cooler leaking out over the ground overnight. Um, as long as the cooler is on and water is evaporating it, it works fine but once it gets up you shut it off for the night and it starts to get up there and it just drips and drips and drips. It'll eventually leak out uh, around the seams of the, of the swamp cooler. Sometimes you can like uh, get up in there, spray it out with water, you know, wiggle the, the valve back and forth, kind of knock it with a, a hammer a little bit to try to dislodge anything that's on that valve. Um, looks like I just made it worse. Eh. But basically the best solution here is to replace that valve. It's pretty inexpensive. This is the, the higher grade brass one. Um, all the components are, components are brass um, with a little locking tab there. Uh, the cheaper ones are like, you know, you know, five to seven dollars. The more expensive ones are like maybe seven to eleven dollars. Uh, I'll put a link to Amazon where you can get those real cheap and easy. But basically it just unscrews. There's a Just a little lock nut there, you unscrew that, detach your water supply, unscrew the lock nut, and pull the whole thing out, uh, and reinstall your new one. Um, I'm not going to make a video on that because that's 
that's pretty simple. All you got is one nut, and this this whole thing comes as a valve with a new nut and everything. I mean, anyone that has access to a pair of channel locks or box wrenches can replace that. What we're gonna do today is see if we can uh, take it apart and fix it without replacing the whole thing. Because I, I, you know, I spent money on this upgraded brass one. Let's see if I can pull this cap off the end there. Uh, pull out this, uh, this cotter pin there. See if I can access the rubber valve to clean it and put it back together. I'm guessing we won't be successful, but uh, we'll give it a try. So I'm gonna pause the video while I get set up. All right, I used a, used my channel locks and I wiggled the, the cap back and forth just to loosen it up because it was pretty well corroded there. And I also bent the ends of the cotter pin uh, straight so that I could pull the cotter pin out. So now the cap is almost loose enough to come off. Pretty simple. Pull the cotter pin out. It is a brass cotter pin or copper. And then this should just come out. And here's the actual valve. can see on the end there it's all dirty and corroded but if we get some vinegar we should be able to clean that up maybe even sand it with a light sandpaper I gotta pause it while I clean it all right I rinsed it off and uh, most of that calcium came off pretty easy, but you can see it is uh, just kind of deformed and pitted a little bit, probably from pressing on all the little calcium deposits that were on it, pressing those against the valve seat, uh, created all those little dents. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean it with some vinegar and a Scotch-Brite pad there. All right, I'm just gonna take some vinegar. I'm using apple cider because that's what I have on hand, but white vinegar will work just fine. This is a standard green scotch bright pad. That's a, a standard basic uh, abrasiveness. And we're just gonna rub it on there. Vinegar should help dissolve any remaining uh, buildup of calcium on the rubber and the scotch brite should help to kind of, you know, it's kind of like a light sandpaper. It'll kind of help to get rid of some of the higher bumps or uh, pitted edges. Looks pretty good. All right, there's my clean surface, and I actually discovered something uh, pretty handy when I was cleaning it. You can actually pull this out. You got a brand new edge back there. Just pull it out, flip it around. You're probably good to go for another year or two. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try it with my cleaned edge. See if just getting that little bit of calcium that was on there when I started, getting that off, if that'll go ahead and seal, and then maybe next year I'll flip it around. All right, kind of you can kind of see up in the valve there, the valve seat. Um, there is some a uh, little bit of buildup and corrosion on there. If you uh, if you're concerned about it, you could take that same piece of Scotch Brite, roll it up and uh, kind of squeeze it in there, maybe using a little pencil or screwdriver to help rub it on the valve seat there. Um, 
they do make valve seat grinders if you wanted to go all out and regrind the valve seat but uh, looks good enough for me I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together and see if I uh, have a good seal I figured I'd go ahead and clean it while I was at it I went ahead and cut a strip off of the scotch right pad kind of rolled it on the end and stuck it in there and now I'm just uh, turning it in one direction against the valve seat uh, just to make sure I'm going through all this trouble I might as well do it right, right. A bit of crud on there. Alright, now I'm going to put it back together and see if it leaks. Alright, check it out. Works. Pretty much good as new. Alright, it's driven again. There we go. There. Yeah, it wasn't all the way up. A lot of times if you get in a little drift like that and you know you got a good water level, you can just turn the float, unscrew the float a little bit rather than messing with this. Because that's kind of a pain in the ass to get that set just right. So you can just unscrew the float a little bit. That puts the, the point of stopping down further. There we go. So I guess it's worth it to go ahead and buy the, the one with the green float is uh, the one that's all brass and apparently serviceable. I didn't think any of them were serviceable. I had always just replaced them you know, in the past, but they're serviceable. Pull off this cap. You could probably technically leave that off if you wanted to, but it just directs the flow of water back down. Uh, and then uh, pull out your cotter pin Pull out the valve and either flip the, the seal around so you got a fresh sealing surface or uh, just